Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at counter-argument and rebuttal. Counter-argument and rebuttal is a kind of move or tactic within an argument, and it's part of a sequence that goes like this. First, you present your argument. Then you argue against yourself, which we call counter-argument. And then you rebut that counter-argument. In other words, you refute it or reject it. Now, you might be thinking, why would I want to argue against myself and then just reject that argument anyway? Well, today we're going to look at the counter-argument and rebuttal sequence in more detail, and we'll look at why this tactic is useful in an argumentative essay. To do this, we're going to use the argumentation that we came up with in the previous video. OK, what could be a good counter-argument here? A good place to start is to look at the main point that you're trying to make. So that was that students should not use mobile phones for classwork. And try to gather together some points for and against this statement. So we've got reasons why they shouldn't be used for classwork. Students are distracted by other apps. Students are not able to read and annotate an article properly on a phone screen. And therefore, students are less engaged and get lower grades. What could be a good counter-argument here? Now, a good place to start is to look at the main point that you're trying to make. So that was that students should not use mobile phones for classwork. And try to gather together some points for and against this statement. So we've got some reasons why they shouldn't be used for classwork already. Students are distracted by other apps. Students are not able to read and annotate an article properly on the phone screen. And therefore, students are less engaged and get lower grades. But what could be a possible reason to disagree with this statement? In other words, can we come up with an argument for why mobile phones should be used for classwork? Well, perhaps we could point out the existence of class participation apps. These are apps that can be used in class for students to vote or answer questions in real time. And these can actually improve student engagement, especially in those large lectures. So this could be a counter argument that argues against the statement that students should not use mobile phones for classwork. Let's have a look at how we can include this in our argumentation. So here's our text again. And you can see that I've added in the counter argument here. So we've got our counter argument now. But when you look at this, you might think, well, if I argue against myself, doesn't that just destroy my argument? Well, that's why rebuttal is so important. With rebuttal, we point out why this counter-argument is actually not strong enough to destroy or threaten our main argument. To do this, we have to find a way to reject or rebut the counter-argument. So how do we do that? Well, to show why this counter-argument isn't strong enough to defeat our main argument, we have to point out why our main point still stands despite the point just made by our counter-argument. One way we can do this, for our example, could be to point out that even though there are useful class participation apps, these kind of apps can also have a desktop interface, so they can be accessed using a laptop. So let's add that rebuttal to our argumentation. Now the counter-argument is dismissed, and we're back on track to argue that mobile phones should not be used for classwork. So, with counter-argument and rebuttal, you're showing your reader a problem with your argument, but more importantly, you're showing the reader why your argument still stands despite that problem. To illustrate why this is so important, think about what would happen if you didn't include this counter-argument. So, you would make your point, students should not use mobile phones for classwork. 
And then someone would be able to easily dismiss your statement just by saying that mobile phones can actually be used to increase engagement with material in class through class participation apps. However, by including and rebutting the counter-argument, you're one step ahead of them. You've argued that since the same functionality can be achieved with a laptop, mobile phones still aren't necessary in class. Now, this person no longer has a reason to dismiss your argument. There are different ways that you can develop your counter-argument and rebuttal sequence. One of these is to debate with your peers. So, one person asserts their argument and the other person tries to counter it. Often, other people can spot weaknesses in your argument that you weren't aware of. If you don't have someone to debate with, you can do it yourself by listing points for and against your main argument, like we did earlier. Then you can develop one or more of the against arguments as a counter-argument and come up with a rebuttal. Now, it's true that counter-argument and rebuttal is a way to stay one step ahead of your readers. However, you should also think of counter-argument and rebuttal as a way to acknowledge the different points of view that you encounter in your reading. So, one of the best ways to go about developing possible counter-arguments is to make notes while you're reading and gather those sources which don't agree with your argument or which offer a contrasting point of view. Likewise, once you have an idea for a counter-argument, make notes whenever you encounter a point that could possibly be used to rebut that counter-argument. To sum up then, counter-argument and rebuttal is a really important tactic in an argumentative essay. It gives you a kind of immunity to the sort of criticisms that a reader could pose against your main argument or thesis. More importantly, though, it's also a way to acknowledge and respect the fact that the things you're writing about are rarely black and white. Whatever you're writing about, it's almost never a simple story. Counter-argument and rebuttal therefore gives you a valuable technique to show your reader that you have considered the topic from different perspectives while still arguing in favour of your particular thesis. Okay, that's all for this time. See you next time.